Okay, class, um, just wanted to post another video to help out with uh, this example uh, for the book section 3.4.3. Um, this example I posted has eight parts to it, um, so I thought it might be helpful to have another video to demonstrate um, verbally uh, what I'm uh, trying to get you to learn here. Uh, so I'm just going to go through each question one at a time. Uh, first question is, is given this circuit and with the um, uh, resistances and LED voltages and transistor parameters given in the problem, first question is, what is the minimum resistance R sub C, so the collector resistor, could be in order to keep the current through the LED below 10 milliamps when the transistor is off? Okay, so... First, what that means is with the transistor off, the current is, go, is going to go from the source down through the uh, collector resistor, through the LED, through the um, next resistor across to CE and to ground. And so if we want to minimize that to 10 milliamps, then we need to figure out what RC should be. So if we use Kirchhoff's voltage loop really because we're going uh, starting at a ground and going to ground we're really making a loop here if we just use voltages uh, Kirchhoff's voltage loop starting at, uh, here at zero uh, we first go along we have a plus VS then we come across to RC that's a drop in uh, voltage so it's minus RC times I max where I max is that 10 milliamps and then we come across here, across the LED. Uh, the LED has a specified uh, voltage drop of 2 volts, uh, but it's a voltage drop, we'll just say minus V LED. And then we come across this next resistor, um, so that's another voltage drop, RCE times the current I max. And we get to ground again, so that equals 0. And by rearranging and solving for I max from that equation and plugging in the values, we get the I max. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm solving for the wrong thing here. We know I max. We're trying to solve for RC. So rearranging and solving for IC, given I max is 10 milliamps, we find that RC needs to be at least 100 ohms. The next question, question 2, says... Alright, now let's say the um, transistor is on and saturated. What is the minimum RC to keep the current through the transistor below 10 milliamps? And in this part, what I'm meaning is the, the current through um, here. Uh, the total current that's leaving the transistor is the sum of the current through here and through the collector. And but what I, right now what I mean to uh, because what I what I want you to calculate is minimize the current from the collector and so if the transistor is on it's going to be easier for the current to go from the source through the resistance at the collector straight to ground through the transistor instead of going through the LED and so if we want to keep that a maximum of 10 milliamps then again we're going between ground and ground. So starting at this ground, we can say, uh, using a voltage, uh, Kirchhoff voltage loop, we say plus Vs minus RC I max. Um, and then it gets us across here. Now we have uh, the voltage drop from the collector to the emitter on the transistor. So that's minus the voltage drop of VCE which in the problem statement uh, is given as 0.2 volts, so that's given to you. And now the, to ground, so we set that equal to zero. Rearranging for RC, we find that RC is equal to 480 ohms. Excuse me, I can't write 480 ohms. So now, given a 480 ohms, when it's saturated, that'll limit total current to 10 milliamps. Uh, part three of the problem, question asks, what is the minimum voltage V in required to turn 
off the LED. So if the transistor is off, the current wants to go through the LED illuminating it. As soon as we turn on the transistor, it's instead going to find an easier path to go through the transistor, which will then turn the transistor off. So we just need to find the resistance, or the voltage in, that will turn the transistor on. Well, if the input voltage, because, let's see, the problem here says VBE, in the problem statement says that VBE is 0.7 volts, meaning in order for the transistor to work, the voltage at the base needs to be at least 0.7 volts higher than the voltage at the emitter. Well, if the emitter is connected to ground, then this voltage only at the base, VB, only has to be 0.7 volts in order to turn the transistor on. Now, in order to get current to flow through the resistor, all we need is a higher voltage on this side of the transistor than on the base. Uh, so, I'm uh, sorry, on the, of the resistor. So if we get a higher voltage on this side, then we'll get current to flow. So really, the V in just has to be anything greater than 0.7 volts. And that will allow the transistor to turn on. Now, part four asks, what is the minimum voltage required to saturate the transistor? So now V in, we want to calculate V in min. And again, this V in min equation is uh, that large uh, funny looking equation, VBE plus RB plus RE times 1 plus beta all over beta RC plus RE oops I wrote that wrong didn't I let me back up a little bit here we go now it's beta RB excuse me can't read tonight RC plus RE times 1 plus beta, all times Vs minus Vce. Now in this case, because the emitter doesn't have a resistor across it, it's just connected to ground, Re is 0, which means we can cut out these parts of the equations, which simplifies the problem a little bit, uh, and plugging in our values, uh, as shown in the, in the notes, Vn min is equal to 0. 796 volts. So before, all we needed was something greater than 0 0.7 to turn the transistor on, and now uh, we need uh, 0.796 volts to saturate the transistor. And all this is uh, using the RC value of 500 as described in the problem statement. So RC is now even greater than the minimum uh, RC values uh, calculated in parts 1 and 2. Okay, so part 5 asks, what is the current draw through the base when the input voltage is V in min? So if this is V in min, what is the current through the base? So what is IB? So if we use a, a voltage loop, again starting from ground and going to ground, you can go through the input, across the resistor, through the transistor, and back to ground. So that would be a plus V in min, because right now it's at the minimum saturation voltage, minus RB IB, which we're trying to find IB, gets us to this point. Now we have to drop across the voltage across the transistors, minus VBE, which gets us to ground, so that equals a zero. So now, if we rearrange this and solve for IB, then we'll calculate and find that that is equal to 0 0.096 milliamps. So, not a lot of current at all, very small. 
the second, er, that's number five, but part six, it says, if BN is BN min, what is the current draw through the collector? So now we want to know what is IC. So, again, starting from this ground, going to this ground, we can do another Kirchhoff's voltage loop and say plus BS minus RC IC, where RC in this, this time is the uh, RC value given in the problem, so that's 500 ohms. Uh, we get to this point, which now we have to drop across the transistor from the collector to the emitter, so we're dropping across BCE, and that gets us ground. So rearranging and solving for IC as shown in the notes, that will end up giving us an IC value of equal to 9.6 milliamps. Now you could have solved this a different way. Remember if the, the transistor is in saturation, if we look at Vn versus the collector current, remember Vn for a while we don't get any current and then once we hit 0.7 just to turn on the transistor it'll go linear until the transistor saturates and it'll be limited and at this point right here this is V in min so this equation is governed by the resistance and that's what we calculated before right here is this IC by rearranging this equation we get IC is equal to VS minus VCE over RC. Well, at this point, this other equation is also true. And this equation is beta IB. Now, beta in this case is 100, and IB was 0 0.096 milliamps, which also ends up giving us that 9.6 milliamps. So you see at the minimum saturation voltage, both equations happen to be true because that's the point that both these equations meet right here. So we could have calculated, calculated that in two ways. In the notes, I've only shown you this way, however, using this part of the curve. Okay. So that's part six. Um, part seven asks, okay, now given... Um, Vn equal to Vn min, what is the total current leaving the transistor? Well, the total current leaving the transistor is this right here. Using a node law, the total current has to be the base current plus the collective current. So if we just add those two together, it's 9.6 milliamps plus the 0.096 milliamps, where 9.6 is the collective current, 0.096 is the base current, we can add those together and end up um, with the 9.696 uh, milliamps. So that's part 7. Now part 8. Erase all this. Part 8 says, all right, what is the total amount current leaving the transistor when Vn is now 5 volts? So we uh, solve this in a similar fashion. Uh, but now we have to use a different Vn. If we go back to that uh, curve, where this is Vn, IC, up to 7, or 0 0.7 volts, it's off, until we get to Vn min, which was uh, probably, I believe it was 0.796 volts. Uh, then we get in the saturation region, we're way over here in 5 volts. So we're at this region here. So we can't use the equation beta IB. Okay, that's only good for this linear line. Here we're at the saturated line, so we have to use the circuitry um, through the resistance. So find the little point we need to first find IB, then we can find IC, and then add the two together. So to get IB, again we start at the ground, we go to the other ground, we say VN minus RB IB minus VBE it's supposed to look like a B equals zero. Rearrange that and solve for IB. We get IB is equal to 
4.3 milliamps. Then starting at this uh, ground, going to this ground, we have Vs minus RC IC minus VCE equals zero. Rearrange and solve for IC. We'll end up um, getting the 9.6 milliamps again, which hopefully makes sense because we're in the saturated saturated region, so we're going to still get the same current as the previous problem when we're saturated. And then now, I uh, E, or the total current leaving the transistor out here, is going to be just the sum IB plus IC, which will end up giving us 13.9 milliamps. So, those are the eight parts to that example problem. I hope that helps clarify a few things.